Good morning, everyone. My name is Marty Fulton, and I'm with the Storage Networking Industry Association. Welcome to the Containers and Microservices Summit. SNEA is delighted to present today on containers and persistent memory. We have a great speaker from our SNEA uh, Persistent Memory and MVDIM Special Interest Group, and we're delighted to be with you. I wanted to do a few housekeeping uh, before we introduce Arthur. You'll see some uh, little buttons at the bottom of your screen. Be sure to ask questions during the session. No question is, is a bad question, so please ask your questions. We also would like you to rate the, our session at the end. We use this for feedback and to uh, provide um, a better, better, even better webcast as we move forward. Um, and then um, also we want you to make sure that you'll follow up and stay till the end and, and reference our website at snea.org forward slash pm, which has a lot of great um, material on persistent memory and containers, and we'll reference that at the end. So let's move forward. Just our little housekeeping from SNEA, our legal notice, we can run right over that. <laughs> So I'd like to introduce our speaker today, Arthur Sanio. Arthur is co-chair of the SNEA Persistent Memory and MVDIM Special Interest Group, which has been in, this, in existence since 2015 and has now expanded their charter to uh, accelerate the awareness and adoption of persistent memory in all forms and MVDIMs for competing architect computing architectures. Arthur is a director of product marketing at Smart Modular, and he's very experienced in driving new product launches and business development at Smart for almost, I guess, almost 20 years, Arthur. Um, he, he worked as a product manager at Hitachi, and he has extensive experience in, in persistent memory and uh, new memory technologies, so he'll be a great uh, resource for you for questions and moving forward. And Arthur has an MBA from San Francisco State and an MS from Arizona State. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Arthur. Thank you, Arthur. Thank you, Marty. Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for taking time to be on the webcast today. If any of you were at the uh, Container World event, it was in February in Santa Clara, so I gave this presentation at that event and had some good questions. It, it's not going to take the whole 60 minutes. It'll probably be about... Uh, Oh, maybe 30, 40 minutes, depending on if anyone has questions. So it's meant to be um, a higher level overview of where we're at with persistent memory, in particular with NVDIMs, and also how that relates to containers. So hopefully I can answer your questions. If not, we have a blog where we can follow up and answer those questions. So the first slide shown here talks about the memory and storage hierarchy and in particular how persistent memory is filling this gap between uh, storage and memory. So memory being byte addressable, high speed access, uh, up to DRAM speeds, that's the load, uh, load store model there you see on the, on the left of the pyramid. So the closer you are to the CPU, the faster the access to the memory. And as, the, as we grow with different types of persistent memory, and I'll talk about that in a moment, um, we'll see more and more uh, use cases as well as uh, technologies filling that, filling that uh, space there to be able to create high speed access and improve application performance. So it means that the application middleware operating systems are, are no longer bound by the file system. They have direct access to, to persistent memory which helps speed up system performance. So what is persistent memory? It's byte addressable, it's non-volatile, and it's accessed as load store. It may also be accessed as block. Those are, those are the more traditional uh, applications that are in play now, but uh, the whole direction to, for the industry is to move toward uh, byte addressable and then having that data be stored uh, non-volatile, so persistent, persistent memory. And it can be many forms. Uh, there's a few listed here. I'll talk about those on the next slide. But one of the key drivers has been the NVDIM-N. And that's been evolving for many years now. I'll talk, a, talk about that in a little bit more detail. But it, it's essentially it's helped to pave the way between this uh, bridging of 
storage and memory in the uh, persistent memory category. So what we have shown here, these are some of the newer technologies that are persistent. So we have FVRAM, MRAM, RERAM, uh, phase change memory, 3D crosspoint, uh, NAND, and uh, also on the far right would be the NVDIMM-N with DRAM and flash backup. So the main points here are the latency, if you look at on the left, uh, the, uh, the interface, whether it's uh, on the DRAM bus or, or elsewhere, and then the density path. So we'll be hearing, as we hear typically every day, developments about these different technologies, but all these are emerging in various stages in the industry. The big question is, how, how will persistent memory reach ubiquity? That means, will there be technologies that approach uh, in de replacing DRAM, high-speed access, uh, and uh, the, the, the costs associated with those? So it's got to reach the, the DRAM, the, uh, the wafer production levels, the, uh, the pricing, and so forth all has to align so that the market can adopt uh, persistent memory in the marketplace. More specifically here, we were showing the difference between uh, the two different types of NVDIMMs. Today we have the NVDIMM-N, that's DDR4. That has a JEDEX standard, which was published uh, about a year and a half ago. But NVDIMM-N operates just like a registered DIMM. So the host system has access to the DRAM, but it does not have access to the flash. So when there's a power loss that occurs, the NVDIMM is decoupled from the host. The data then is transferred from the DRAM to the flash, so it requires backup power during that process. But the memory is seen as persistent, so the NVDIMM-N is plugged into a host system. It's recognized through the BIOS and the MRC code as an NVDIMM-N. It's mapped as uh, persistent memory, but it's seen as a registered DIMM. So now there's a new la layer of persistent memory that end users can have access to to help improve system performance. The NVDIMM-P is still in development. The, we expect the publication or the specification to be published uh, this year in 2018 through JEDEC. And the difference with the NVDIMM-P, it has a media controller on it, which uh, unifies the, the interface to the, to the DRAM bus. It's targeted for DDR5. And uh, what goes behind that media controller can be any different, any number of types of persistent memory that I, I've shown on the previous slide. So we expect that specification, as I mentioned, to come out later this year through JEDEC. So how are NVDIMMs being used? Really, it's about uh, the, the first bullet on the top. You have journaling, uh, logging, caching. Uh, it's all about log acceleration by being able to use that persistent area of main memory for uh, uh, the, that caching types of functions that can improve system performance. Instead of writing to storage or to, through the I.O., you're able to put those transactions into the persistent memory area and dramatically improve system performance. So a couple of others listed there, tiering, caching, write buffering, met metadata storage on the bottom bullet would be checkpoint acceleration. All the, those are all the types of applications today that are using NVDIMMs uh, uh, with uh, various types of end customers today. So here's a snapshot of the NVDIMM ecosystem. What we're showing here is the hardware the BIOS, the MRC, so a couple of things to point out here that, first of all, the MRC code in the BIOS has been NVDIMM enabled. As I mentioned before, the JEDEC standard has been released, so many, many servers and storage platforms available today are JEDEC enabled, and it's an uh, industry standard accepted uh, um, specification to be able to adopt NVDIMMs. You have Linux 4.4 and above being um, compatible for NVDIMMs, and also open source libraries available through PMEM, and I'll talk about those in just a moment. So
So one slide here showing the performance benefit of using NVDIMMs. This is a uh, Super Micro X11 system. It's running uh, some Calypso benchmark software, and we're comparing NVDIMMs with an, uh, an Optane SSD drive. So the bar would be the IOPS, and the blue line would be the, the latency. So you're getting orders of magnitude performance increase in the number of IOPS, also orders of magnitude uh, decrease in the amount of latency. So very low latency access, it's DRAM access, and high IOPS. So that's the main point of this performance benchmark chart here. So how do NVDIMMs improve performance? So first of all, they're byte addressable. They're seen as DRAM. There's no I.O. There's direct access to, to, to the persistent layer of memory. So those facts alone are what's driving the adoption of, of NVDIMM-N in particular and helping to pave the way for other persistent memories uh, to move forward. So the NVDIMM, again, dash N appears as DRAM to the host system, so you have high speed access to a persistent layer of memory, or a persistent uh, tier of memory in, in the uh, memory hierarchy. This is a just a marketing outlook for the adoption of persistent memory in the marketplace. So you see probably a threefold increase over the next couple of years out to 2021. 30, I think it's about a 38% increase in the adoption of, of persistent memories in server and storage platforms. And this is from uh, Gartner, end of the last year. So this is a checklist of the infrastructure changes that have been necessary to move forward in the adoption of persistent memories. You've had operating system changes with Linux and Microsoft, I'll mention those. File, file systems need to, to, to map the files. Hypervisors and containers, I'll talk about that in just a moment. But really, it's, it's now at the stage of where all the uh, applications can take advantage and need to be written to take advantage of persistent memory. So this has taken place over the last seven to 10 years now that we're at this point. This is an example of a, uh, this is a survey actually, an IT survey that shows that the importance of persistent memory to IT managers. And uh, in the case of a state, stateful database, if you're gonna make changes to the database that, you're, that is in use, those need to be logged and recorded. And typically, they're being logged and recorded into storage. And if you're using persistent memory, you can log those into persistent memory and dramatically reduce that logging time and increase the performance of the overall system. So this is just one example here. And, and if we can solve this issue and create uh, high-speed access to persistent memory, that's going to create a definite advantage for, for end users. So in relation to containers and persistent memory, so containers uh, are the, the are agnostic. They need to see the, the 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 PM the persistent memory needs to be exposed to the containers through the operating system. So as I mentioned before on the on the ecosystem, the BIOS and the MRC recognize and map the persistent memory, and then the either the hypervisor or the container has visibility of the persistent memory through the operating system. So that's where and users can take advantage and write applications that see the, where this end, the persistent memory is seen through the hypervisor or the container. So the application changes, again, uh, can use modified implementations of legacy interfaces to start. That's mainly the block access mode today. So that support is needed in Docker and other container engines. I know we had a lot of discussions and questions at the Container World event about this in particular. And the applications be, need to become aware of the NVM programming model semantics. We'll talk about that in just a moment. And there is library support, that's pmem.io. And then also support for high, avail high availability systems.
as of uh, the, for the operating systems, first with uh, Linux, we had 4.4 and above have uh, NVDIM enabled subsystems have been added. That's the NFIT table, the NVDIM firmware interface table. The NVDIMs are presented as device links so they can be uh, mapped correctly and they have direct access. So that's Linux 4.4 and above has NVDIM uh, enabled. Uh, that, that was a dramatic change and when that finally did happen, I think that was about uh, two years ago now. And also when we move to, oh, excuse me, I'll get to the Microsoft status in just a moment. So the NVM programming model is developed by SNEA. There's four, four modes and uh, the whole idea is to be able to help the transition into persistent memory. The first one talks about uh, the persistent memory map mode. Let me back up just a second here. Oh, it'll be the next one, sorry. So the persistent memory mode is, a direct, is the ideal mode to access persistent memory. That would be um, directly from the, the PM, the, the programming layer, to the persistent memory and with no, no I/O overhead, and that would be byte access. So this, this describes the application behavior for accessing persistent memory. As I mentioned before, the persistent memory standards have definitely helped pave the way for adoption. And uh, the first one listed here is the uh, uh, JEDEC 245 and 245B, the byte addressable energy back interface. So that is a JEDEC standard for the NVDIM-N. Also, the ACPI 6.2 specification was modified with these items here, the NFID table, et cetera, so that these NVDIMs can be recognized in the host systems. One item that has been coming up uh, recently and over the last uh, two, one to two years or so would be encryption. So if you're using persistent memory as a portion of main memory and then you're storing data that needs to be protected, so in the case of a power loss, the data gets backed up to the NVDIM or to the persistent memory, how is that data protected? So in the case of financial applications, uh, public sector, health, and uh, private sector, encryption is needed in some of these cases. And with a block access, that can be managed, right? But with byte access on NVDIMs, the memory controller and the BIOS and MRC have to provide that encryption code to the NVDIM in order to, to lock the data or encrypt the data. So that is in discussion within JEDEC and it's probably going to be the rest of this year before that a standard on encryption emerges. But this is a need in the market that is emerging about encryption and protecting the data that is stored in persistent memory. Arthur. Yes. I just wanted to, um, to interrupt a little bit. There was a question that came up, um, and I, we may not have had the slide for this on the deck, but um, you had mentioned if you go back a couple of slides about Linux support. Of, um, of persistent memory. And could you speak a little bit about um, Microsoft Windows? There's a question if Microsoft uh, yeah, Windows thank, also supports persistent memory? Yes, thank you, Marty. And I think that was just an oversight because that slide is missing here. So I think what we'll do is we'll add that back in. I don't know what happened, but yeah, it's in uh, Microsoft 2016 Windows Server does have native support for NVDIMs and it can be direct access or block access. So either one is supported through Windows. There are a couple of videos online that talk about application benefits with Windows specifically and NVDIM-N. Uh, so those are some pretty good videos. So we'll, we'll add that slide back in. The answer to that question is yes, definitely Microsoft does support uh, persistent memory in the form of NVDIM-N. So I think for Arthur, in fact, out. the Persistent Memory Summit that uh, SNEA put on in January of 20. Um, 18, which was a live event, but uh, completely videotaped and presentations are available. I think there's a whole section on Microsoft Windows support as well as Linux support. So that's, we can reference that at the end. Mm -hmm. uh, 
and also uh, Marty, I, there's another slide that's missing. I have to point it out. Is is uh, I, I didn't notice this, but the the block mode, the the two forms in the block mode for the the Indian programming model. We'll add that one back in as well. All right. So we talked about the standards uh, definitely helping pave the way for the adoption of persistent memory. Encryption, I mentioned that. Are there any questions about encryption? Okay. So I've talked about uh, a, f a number of topics here. I've kind of went over them a little bit quickly, but does anybody have any questions uh, at this point? So the whole, the whole idea here is uh, persistent memory is emerging. There are many technologies coming out that are filling that gap between storage and memory, byte addressable, fast access, that can definitely speed up uh, systems and, applic and applications. Container engines can definitely take advantage of persistent memory, it's just about writing applications that are, are exposed by the operating systems, both Linux and Microsoft. And those are the, the bulk of the questions that we get at these events in terms of you know, how can we take advantage of this high-speed access to persistent memory. Arthur, we have a question that came in. Um, there's a question that uh, if you could clarify what it means for applications to be NVDIM aware for direct access. Block access can be leveraged from SCSI. So the direct access is a modified file system that when that, when that NVDIM is plugged in, the BIOS and the MRC recognize it through the SPD as an NVDIM, and then it's mapped as persistent. At the byte level. So I, I'll have to go back and get more details. We can put that in the blog and uh, flush that out a little bit further to further clarify and explain that. So any additional questions, uh, click the Ask a Question button. All right. So. Persistent memory has been uh, definitely a key area of focus for SNEA. There's the, did, Marty, did you want to talk about this slide? I do. Thank you, Arthur. Um, so persistent memory is one of the nine major areas that the SNIA Storage Networking Industry Association um, has their 2,500 member volunteers working on. So SNEA is in over 160 uh, countries and 160, 160 uh, member companies in, um, in all with a number of different um, activities. So persistent memory is two major activities within SNEA. There's a technical work group. These are the individuals that do, if you think of a company, do development. Um, so they're developing non-volatile memory programming model, which Arthur re referenced a few slides ago, so developing ways to, to put together kind of a, a, a specification or a model that uh, companies and manufacturers and users can use to develop APIs to write directly to persistent memory as, as storage comes together with memory. So that's, that's that group. And then the persistent memory and NVDIM SIG, of which Arthur's the co-chair, is another uh, active group. And Arthur's going to speak about their expanded charter in a minute. Um, SNEA, in addition, has eight other areas that they do uh, extensive work in, physical storage with solid state and hyperscaler storage, um, uh, data in the cloud, so working with a number of organizations for data orchestration and for you know, data, data protection in and out of the cloud, security, encryption. There's a lot of overlap with, with different areas, but working on encryption and really um, work with the GDPR um, that's going to be finalized in Europe in the next month. Um, and then data management and storage management with a storage management interface, which is an ISO standard, and then a new um, activity called Swordfish, where you can manage uh, storage as you manage servers. So it's just an extension. And that's work being done with another industry organization, the DMTF. So there's a lot of, of great things to get involved with with SNEA. Um, 
you don't have to be a member in order to take advantage of their extensive knowledge. There's a, you can subscribe to STEM Matters, the newsletter. You can dive into all of the videos and, and um, presentations that SNEA puts on their website. They're all totally free to download and review. And we have excellent series, including everything you wanted to know about storage, but we're too proud to ask. And now we are just starting the Great Debate series. So there's a webcast, in fact, next hour, file versus, versus a block. So a debate between which is better. So I hope you'll be able to take advantage of some of those. Thanks, Arthur. I'll turn it back to you. So as Marty mentioned in the beginning, the, uh, the NVDIM Special Interest Group has been renamed to be called the Persistent Memory in NVDIM Special Interest Group. We've been around for more than three years. And in the beginning, that was definitely focused on the hardware and making sure NVDIMs can operate in these servers. It's all, it was also focused on the uh, MRC code and the BIOS, making sure that the persistent memory, in this case in the form of a, a uh, our DIM, registered DIM being visible can be recognized. So that took many, many years. And we're at this point now where we're, fo we're talking about applications and how to take advantage of persistent memory. Everything has been standardized. There's other persistent memory technologies em emerging. So our group here, the, the persistent memory group, NVDIM Special Interest Group, we're looking to have new contributors that can help us in terms of applications and use cases and models and continue the the adoption here and providing uh, resources to help expand and continue the, uh, the movement of this persistent memory group. So we have an open call starting uh, May 11th, between, so between now and uh, the time of Flash Memory Summit in August. We have open calls and we invite anyone who would like to participate and get involved to join that call. The first one, as, as I mentioned, will be on May 11th and uh, those will go through to, to August. And the main points here would be developing uh, uh, case studies, user models, uh, identifying areas that need more work in, in, in the application segments and so forth. So we invite other people to join and uh, help contribute and take advantage of all the benefits that SNEA has to offer. So the other question I see here is, is it accessed like L4? So it's, it's accessed exactly like an RDIM, so it's DRAM memory. That's how the NVDIMs are accessed in that, in that case. So other technologies are emerging, maybe accessed slightly differently, but uh, for, for the case today for, NV, for DDR4 NVDIMs, they're accessed exactly like uh, DRAM. So any, any final questions as we wrap up? Great. So as I mentioned before, this is Marty Fulton again with SNEA. Um, please visit our website, um, snea.org slash PM, easy to remember, for persistent memory. So we have a number of persistent memory videos, including our 2018, January 2018 Persistent Memory Summit, which was a full day of activities, 15 different sessions on persistent memory um, in all aspects and forms. And you know, we're, persistent memory is now moving towards applications, so there was a number, were a number of sessions on how persistent memory is used in a variety of applications. And then we hope that you'll join us for additional, you know, for the open series of calls, which means that you don't need to be a SNEA member to, to join the call and participate and contribute um, for that open period in the summer. We're really looking for particularly users of persistent memory, users of containers, to kind of come and talk to us about what um, you would like to see SNEA work on, what you would like to, you know, to see in the industry for education, for, um, for work by the different companies. There's 35 members of the in, involved in the persistent memory work, 35 companies involved in persistent memory work at SNEA. So you're seeing you know, big companies, small companies, emerging companies that are all now working on this very exciting topic. And then I hope you'll attend Flash Memory Summit which is in August in Santa Clara, California at the Convention Center, there are, there's a two-day track on persistent memory um, at, in addition to other sessions and an exhibit hall with probably 160 different companies exhibiting on the, a variety of aspects about flash and, and persistent memory. So we do have one more question, Arthur. I don't know if you can see it. Thanks for asking. 
So no, there's no impact. The question is about direct oh, access. Yeah, of, if you could read it, that'd be great. Direct access avoids a file system overhead or load store access and non-volatile memory are slower than accesses to DRAM. So no, there's no impact to the CPU performance. And why is that? It, it's not adding uh, overhead uh, at all. That the persistent memory. It's just it's just uh, a, a mapped out section of main memory as persistent. So there's nothing that would slow slow the access to that down or slow the CPU down because of that. Great. So these questions that have been asked today, and we have some other questions as well. Um, we'll, we will have a blog, so if you go to snea.org slash pm, give us a couple of weeks, and we'll, we're going to have a blog, a follow-up blog to this, um, to our webcast that will answer questions. And if you do, if you could go, we'll go back one slide. If you do have a question um, on this talk or on persistent memory in general, if you email pmmvdim-chair at snea.org, um, we can actually include that in the blog and answer the question for you. So again, with no more questions, oh, so here's another question. It says each access will take longer, won't it? No, I don't see how that would be the case. Again, it's, it's, it's just being accessed as standard DRAM memory, so there's no additional overhead associated with that. I'll, I'll go check further. I can post that on the blog and, and um, see what other details I can uh, gather and to, re to reply to that question. Thanks, Arthur. So we'd ask finally if you would click your second button um, on the bottom of your screen and rate our session. And definitely if you have other additional questions or, and comments, please enter them. And we appreciate your time and hope that you enjoy the rest of the uh, sessions in, the, in this Container and Microservices Summit. Thanks for your time, and I think we'll sign off now. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.